Hi everyone, if you're like me, you've had to teach a lot online and do live streaming and also do some demos as well. Well, this box here, the ATEM Mini by Blackmagic Design, changed the way I teach and I think it will change the way you teach as well because it allows me to switch from cameras to devices and I can have four of them and I can easily kind of mix it up. This is really useful if you're teaching, particularly things like music, cooking, science, and so on. It works with Teams, Skype, and Zoom, and I'm gonna show you that in a moment, but I wanted to use this here so you can see what it does. But I'm gonna show you how it connects up. And it's really simple. It basically plugs in to either a Windows or Mac device, and it then looks at it and sees it as a webcam. So you can just choose the camera and you only need to choose it once. And it picks up the audio from here as well. So you can see I'm wearing a microphone and that's just gonna make the sound that much better. So plugging into here, I've got four devices. That's the most it can plug in. You don't need to have four. You can have any number up to that. And I'm just gonna show you what this can do. By the way, in another video, I'm gonna show you how you can use this to do green screen. You know, like how they do the weather forecast so you can project into the background. This does it as well. So I did mention Teams, Zoom, and Skype. You know, this works on Facebook Live. So if you wanna do live stream or YouTube, so really, really useful device. And I paid about 300 pounds for it. I've put a link for it below so you can easily find it. But you might wanna look around if you can perhaps get it cheaper. But I find that this is really, really good value and just so easy to use. So I've got this camera here. I've got this one here looking at the device so you can see what it's doing. I've got my laptop here. This is a Windows laptop, but you could use a Mac. I've got a uh, iPad here that's got an HDMI coming out of it. So basically, it's anything with HDMI that's coming out. Now, if it's a camera, you need to make sure it doesn't have all the extra information that you see in the viewfinder. And I've got another video with a link below showing you how you can get what's called clean HDMI. Okay, so here I am. This is the camera you're seeing on this monitor right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on two here on my A10 Mini and it has switched to this camera. And you can see it just easily cuts between them. You might have someone do this for you, but you can see even if you're on your own, you can easily switch between them. So here I am, I'm looking now at what I've got on the laptop, but perhaps you want your students to see you as well. Well, you can do picture in picture and it's as simple as pressing a button. And you'll see here in the top corner, there I am. Now, if you went into the software that comes with it, which is free, then you can adjust the size of it as well. But you can choose where on the screen you want to be, which corner, just in case a presentation or what you're trying to show is actually blocking it. So it's as simple as that. Now, you can add a little pizzazz to it because you might want to just get a little bit more engagement going with your students. And I don't know how easy you have found teaching online, but sometimes you might need to do a little bit more to get their attention. So I can just press this auto button here and you'll now see that when I press any of these buttons, it now fades between them. If I wanted to add a little bit more, I could maybe have what's called a wipe. And you'll see now that if I press here, you'll see that it slides across, which can sometimes capture people's attention. So this is great. And it is a really easy thing to set up. I'm gonna show you that now. If I didn't mention it before, this does work on Mac and Windows, and it's just really easy to use. So let's take a look now at how I set this up and also see it connected into my Teams, Zoom, and Skype. Okay, so here is the A10 Mini. That's the front that's got all the buttons on it. Let me just show you the back here. This is where you're going to plug everything in. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is plug in my power here. So I've got my cable. I'm just going to plug that in. And it screws on to stop it getting pulled out, which is really quite useful. So I do now want to put in my HDMI. I'd normally have this flat on the table. And actually, let's just do that. Okay, so let's start by plugging in my HDMI and I want to plug them in in the right order. Now the one when I'm doing the picture in picture is camera number one. So I want that to be my main camera. So I'm just going to plug that in here. And it's just as simple as plugging in an HDMI. And then all of my others, I can plug them in whatever order I prefer. So I'm gonna have 
the uh, camera here, this other one. I'm going to plug that in so that is now going into there. Then I've got my laptop. Let's plug that in here. I like to kind of have them in the same kind of order. So I like to have my main camera first and then I'm just going to plug in the iPad. So that is all of them plugged in. If I wanted it to be plugged into a, like a TV or some other monitor, I've got an HDMI out just here so I can actually use that. Now for the USB, I need to connect it into here and then that's going to go into the computer. So I've got a USB cable in here. It's USB-C at this end. Let's just plug that in. And then I would then plug that into the computer. Okay, so we've got everything set up. I've connected everything up. And as I said to you before, it works on Mac and Windows as well. So it works really well. So now that I have it all connected up, how does it work in Teams, Zoom and Skype? Now this also works for YouTube and Facebook and if you use things like OBS and Wirecast. But seeing these, you will get the idea of how you can actually select the camera. Basically, it has tricked the computer into thinking that this is a webcam and you can plug in different webcams. You can plug in all sorts of different cameras into your computer. Here I'm using a MacBook Pro, but it doesn't matter Windows or Mac, which one are you working on? So I'm going to start here with Zoom. That's very popular. I know many of you use that for teaching. And I'm also going to quickly show you Teams and Skype as well. So here I am on my Zoom call and it's actually using my current webcam that's built in, which is called the FaceTime camera. I'm just going to go down into the bottom left hand corner here where it says stop video. And you'll see here it's got a little arrow. I click on it and I can choose this black magic design. There you go. You can see I've actually got others here as well that I've had plugged in in the past and I could use them again. I'm just going to choose this one. It's the 30 FPS, which stands for frames per second. That's how quickly it refreshes. That's plenty fast enough. I sometimes find the 60 doesn't always work on all devices. So go for the 30. That's more than enough. And I choose that. And there you are. You can see me right here. And I'm going to show you how it works with this in just a moment. I'm just now going to switch over to Teams and show you how you can do the same thing on Teams. So here I am in Teams. I've started the meeting and it's setting it up. And over here, you'll see below the video, it's already chosen it. Down at the bottom, it's got this little gear wheel here. I click on it. That's my settings. That's device settings. And on the right hand side, you can see it says camera. If I click here, you can choose the, well, I can choose the FaceTime camera. You've probably got another one. So that's that one, which you've seen before. And this one is the Blackmagic Design. I think you're getting the idea. But what I'm going to do is show you how this works in Skype. So I've set up to start a meeting in Skype. And just like in Teams, it's given me the option to choose the camera. And it's here in the bottom left hand corner. If I click here, I can again choose the different cameras. I'm going to go back to the Blackmagic Design. And I will be able to, just like in Teams, also be able to choose the camera there. Oh, I should go back to Teams and show you that. So start meeting. And over here, if you've started the meeting already, you can go to more and then go to audio and video settings. So those are in the bottom right hand corner. And again, here on the Blackmagic Design, you can choose the options here by clicking on this drop down. So there you go. That's how easy it is. So you'll notice if you're using YouTube or actually Facebook, it would be the same kind of thing. So very, very handy. Let me just flip back to Teams. Sorry, I should have shown you this. I'm going to join it. So I'm back here in Teams now and the meeting has started. So if I wanted to change the camera, let's say it hasn't chosen the Blackmagic Design and I didn't choose it first. It's over here in the top, more actions, device settings, and I could choose it now. So that's how it works. So let's just stay here in Teams. Let's just close that. So now you can see that if I actually choose any of the different cameras, they're going to come up in my meeting, just like that, which is very cool. So I'm here now. Let me go over to here. This is my website. And you'll notice it's actually mirrored. So you might get that in Skype as well. That's not how your audience see it. Your audience see it the right way around. It's just if you were presenting and pointing, you would want to know where you were if you were back here on the camera. That's how you kind of see yourself. 
So don't worry about that if it's looking the wrong way around here. And by the way, everything I'm doing with Teams, Skype and Zoom are on the current versions. So there may be some slight variation if they do any updates. But let's just go back to here so we can see the laptop. I want to add in a picture in picture. All I've got to do is switch it on. And there you go. There I appear in the corner and I can choose the different corners as I like. And if I want, I could also do a little mix here. So I could have some effects. Let's just go here. I could make it slide across like I showed you before. As you can see, very straightforward. I'm going to do some videos showing you in more detail how you can do this, including how you could change the size of the picture in picture and also add in some other graphics. But just to use this straight out of the box and plug in your cameras, this is just really easy to do. If I didn't mention it before, do check out my video on clean HDMI if you've got your cameras and you're getting all the information from the viewfinder as well. So there you go. This has revolutionized how I teach. I hope it does for you and gives your students and yourself a far better and more engaging experience. Thanks for watching. If you do like this, please do like, share and subscribe. If you have found this useful and you do teach, I'm sure your colleagues might find this useful as well. Happy teaching. Thanks for watching and stay safe.